Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at some security features which you might want to update or potentially look into if you're on Windows 10 or Windows 11. This is going to be looking at Windows Defender and a very handy little add on called Defender UI, which you can enable to actually get the most out of the built in Windows antivirus solution. So, I've got a bit of a cold, a bit of a scratchy throat, so bear with me. Let's go over to the computer and we'll see what it's all about. So this is our Windows 11 desktop, so this is the Defender UI website. Uh, this was actually coded by the people at Voodoo Shield, and if you've been in the, uh, the PC business or the industry for a while, you would know about them. It's very, very good stuff, but it is a paid service. Whereas this Defender UI is completely free of charge, which is awesome. We're going to download this version. This is version 1.16. Depending when you're watching this, there may be an updated version. So let's go into Download Free and we'll save it to our Windows desktop and then we can run the program. So you'll get the user account control because we are gonna be making modifications to the system. So just click on yes. We can close this down now and we can go through the actual wizard. So here are the setup wizard, we'll just click on next. You can read through the uh, license agreement should you wish to, but it's actually quite simple and quite simplistic. So we're just gonna accept the agreement and click on next. And there we go. You'll be first greeted with the uh, welcome, and we've got options here on which profile you want to select. So these are initial security profiles. Now you can tweak them to some extent, or you can just reset. So if you decide that Defender UI isn't for you, you can just choose default and it will reset Windows Defender back to its default settings. Hope that makes sense. So you've got a recommended profile, which is gonna be pretty much for most users. You've got an interactive one. This is gonna be more for slightly more advanced users. Or if you're somewhat paranoid or skeptical of what is on the internet, then the aggressive profile might be the one for you. So you can choose whichever you want. I'm actually gonna go with recommended for now. And again, you get the uh, welcome screen. So this is the main sort of homepage. Now, most of this actually links to parts within Windows Defender itself. So if you click on real-time protection, it'll bring up Windows security and all the usual things. So a lot of this stuff is hyperlinks, but it actually gives a lot more variables and options for you to choose. And some things which are actually absolutely bizarre, which I'm surprised Microsoft don't just do a standard, but I guess they're catering for a massive global database of users. So they wanna make it as uh, compatible as possible with everybody. So you've got the obvious things. So real-time protection, you want enabled. Cloud delivered protection, you want that enabled as well. And also your Windows firewall. So those are the, the main key things. You really want all of those enabled. And you've also got other options here for logs, Windows security, Windows update, and all that kind of stuff. You've also got the option for this to start with Windows, which really you need to. And also the option for dark mode or light mode, depending on your preferences, and also the opacity of the screen. So I'm gonna actually set that to 100% so you can't see behind it. So there we go. Now there is one little bit of kind of adware within Defender UI, unfortunately. It's the nature of the beast when anything is free, they obviously want you to upgrade in some way, shape or form. So at the bottom here, you've got this rather uh, odd thing here. So prevent malware from ever infecting this system. Now this sounds like an absolute obvious thing to do, but if you turn that on, it basically goes to their other product, which is the CyberLock, which you may or may not be interested in. If you are, then take a look at that. That is a much more advanced version of Windows security. So we're not gonna do that, obviously as well. If you've got any comments or questions, you can go to support at defenderui.com. And also, if you like this program, you can donate to them should you wish to. So that's the main homepage there, pretty straightforward stuff. Obviously, you can change language as well should you want to if you're in a different country. So that is the main one done. Also, you've got your profile access here. So you've got your recommended, interactive, aggressive, default, and also you can create a custom profile should you want to, which you may wish to do. So let's go through the main tabs here. So we've looked at home, let's look at basic. So we've got options here. Now you've got folder controlled access or controlled folder access, which is ransomware protection. This weirdly is not enabled as default in Windows. So we'll turn that on. We also got things like network protection, behavior monitoring, PUA, which stands for potentially unwanted applications. So that is gonna cover PUAs and PUPs. So PUPs are potentially unwanted programs and you've got potentially unwanted applications. It's kind of the same thing anyway. Uh, block at first sight. Obviously, if there's a potential issue that is either being downloaded or on your system, you want that enabled. And also you've got your cloud protection levels, cloud check timeouts. So if for some reason, the file that you're actually trying to check 
for some reason either isn't available or you cannot access the internet, then it'll time out for that in 20 seconds, which is fine. A smart screen, that's a useful thing to have. I would leave that set to user, but you can have it as disabled, worn, block, whichever you want to do. So user intervention there. That is like if you download a program which hasn't been um, certified, it will give you the warning saying this program has not been certified, do you want to run it? So I like to have user control over that myself personally, but you may choose different. You've also got automatic sample submission. You may want to turn that off, entirely up to you really. And also you've got the hide virus and threat protection in Windows security. That is kind of like a default thing, so I'd leave that. The rest of this is uh, essentially pretty much left as it is. So that is the basic section. We've then got advanced. So this is something that's actually quite important, scan email which is something which Windows Defender doesn't do as a default. Although if you're using Office 365, kind of Defender is built into that, but you may want to enable that. You also got the options to scan all downloaded files and attachments, which again, Windows Defender doesn't necessarily do. You can also scan scripts, archives, removable drives. So if you plug in a drive, it will scan that as well. Also network attached files, and also scanning of mapped network drives. So if you're using some form of NAS or you're working via a VPN, you may want to enable that as well. Got some other settings here. So file hash computation, low CPU priority. You can change that uh, to be enabled. If you've got a moderately fast or modern system, then you don't really need to enable that. You can leave it as it is. And the rest of it is pretty much default stuff. ASR rules we've got here. So you can choose individual settings. So you can use the advanced protection against ransomware, block untrusted and unsigned processes that run from USB. Again, most of this is gonna be on anyway depending which profile you're in. But if it's not, if you're in like the default profile, most of this will be disabled. You also got an option here for blocking process creations from originating from PSX and WMI commands. You may want to enable that. And also you've got an option here for blocking abuse of exploited vulnerable sign drivers. So this, again, I would set to warn. You don't necessarily want it disabled or block because it may actually stop some devices working or maybe some RGB software. You've also got block credential stealing from the Windows Local Security Authority subsystem, or LSASS as it's known. Now that is disabled, so I would probably enable that. And also you've got block executable files from running unless they meet a prevalence age or trusted list credentials. With that, I would say probably warn is a better idea rather than having disabled. But again, you can choose to do whatever you want here. Then the last one is gonna be the Defender Guard. So again, enable real-time protection, cloud deliver protection as we had previously in the home section, and also we've got the Windows Firewall. This essentially is kind of replicating what is in the home screen, just a little bit more condensed. And also you've got auto reactivation. So if for some reason a program tries to deactivate your antivirus, your cloud delivered protection, or even disables your Windows Firewall, the program will automatically reactivate those after a default time. So we've got 10 minutes here, but of course you can change that to either disabled or anything between five minutes and 24 hours. Again, whatever you choose there, it's down to you. I would probably leave it as set to the defaults. At this point, if you want to, you can actually save a profile. So save your custom profile. Or again, if you don't like the profile, you can choose a different one. So we choose aggressive and you can just go with whatever it says. Again, lots of choices here, but essentially what it's doing is it's taking over from this kind of very uh, obscure Windows security page, which goes through all these different things, and there's so much stuff going on there, it's actually hard to keep up with it. So I feel that the Defender UI, as it says, is a UI for Defender, and it seems to work very well and adds a lot more features that you would otherwise not have access to or struggle to find. So there you go, hopefully that's made some sense to you. If it hasn't, then obviously let us know in that comment section below and I'll try and help you as best I can. I actually strongly suggest that you try this, give it a go, see what you think of it. Ultimately, adding extra security to your Windows devices is probably a good idea, depending on what you use your PC for. If it's just a basic gaming machine, then potentially you might not need to, but if you're someone who is possibly downloading EXE files, cracks and modifications to your system, then it's probably a smart idea to enable this and uh, set it to aggressive. But let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.